Millions of people left the country. The point I'm trying to make is the war was terrible, but it just shows how it's not the people. The people are good. Interesting, after primary school, a lot of my Caucasian friends would go out and play on their bikes and do things, and I'd have to study, you know, until the sun <laughs> went down. The best moment came on when Hassan Minaj. Oh, that was incredible. It was on YouTube, actually, so he did an AMA on us. Um, I did a personality test once and I found out I was 96% extroverted. How's your day been? It's been a terrific day. I'm loving Sydney. The weather is a lot better than Melbourne. Sunny. It's been terrific. And um, the people are friendly. I've experienced some brilliant Sydney hospitality from yourself and from your lovely wife. I'll interrupt you. Sydney wins <laughs> in <laughs> Melbourne. All right, guys, Sydney wins. <laughs> so uh, welcome, Noel, to the Curious Banter. Uh, I'm sure, like most of our careers, you are also a migrant child. Mm. I happen to know that you are a refugee child. Mm. So just take us through the journey, um, you know, being a refugee child, your, your upbringing, um, and basically everything uh, which sums up of what you are today. Well, so let me start, but I'll give you a quick intro into Sri Lanka and a bit of the context for why my parents came over. So Sri Lanka in the 1940s gained independence from the British and in Sri Lanka, there's two major race groups. There's a pe the Tamil speaking people in the north and the Sinhalese people speaking in the south. Sinhalese? The Sinhalese, okay. that's correct. 75% yeah. are Sinhalese in the south, 25% are Tamil in the north, right? Okay. And once uh, the independence was given, the government was given to the majority Sinhalese people in the south, right? And so after that, um, as kind of Tamil people moved around, Sinhalese people moved around, there were some just racial tensions. Mm -hmm. And in 1983, th this was the boiling point. So if you've ever heard of a Sri Lankan and you ask them about the 83 riots, this is when things really kind of boiled over. And this was a day when um, a lot of the South Sinhalese people, they went and they, uh, uh, I guess, attacked and lit on fire Tamil property, uh, killed a lot of Tamil wow. people and a lot of stuff happened, right? Um, and that's what really sparked the war, was yeah, one of the yeah. instigators. Anyways, long story short, millions of people left the country. A lot of Tamil people, unfortunately, a lot of the North was destroyed. But fortunately, my parents, my grandma and my mother were granted at that time, Australia was giving out passports and, you know, they were helping people as well from the Northern side. Gave them citizenship in Australia. Uh, my father came as a student. My parents met in Australia. Um, and growing up, one thing I realised was um, in school, right, I looked like this, this is my appearance, but I spoke like this. So Aussie through <laughs> and through with this South Asian appearance. Right. And in school, when they asked, where are your parents from? I'd say Sri Lanka. Now, very interestingly, the South Sinhalese people, right? The biggest population outside of Sri Lanka is actually Melbourne, right? Really? And so they would also say, hey, we're from Sri Lanka as well. Mm. And what, what was very interesting was, and obviously I knew a bit of the history, right? But these were some of the most lovely people on earth. And some of them are my best friends today. My housemate is, uh, is Singhalese Sri Lankan. And I think the, the point I'm trying to make is the war was terrible, but it just shows how it's not the people. The people are good. When policies and you know politics and things come in, that's what creates the instability, the, the disunity that leads to stuff like this, that displaces people. But anyway, so I love to, I just wanted to mention that piece as well. Mm -hmm. Love my Sri Lankan brothers and sisters. Um, but yeah, growing up in Australia, so that's what brought us to Australia. Grew up here, I was born here. Uh, it was very interesting, right? Because in the cricket, you know, who do I support? Is it <laughs> Australia or is it Sri Lanka or is it even India? I don't know. You know, there's so many different options, I know. right? Um, and when I was growing up, it was Warren, you know, he was one of the greatest spinners of all of time. Of course. Rest in peace to the legend. But also, Morley was playing. And I, I uh, look, controversial opinion, I think he's the greatest <laughs> player of all time. I second to that. I second to that. You second yeah. to that. So, growing up was very interesting. Um, especially, you know, in my suburb, it was very multicultural. Lots of curries, lots of like uh, Chinese, Asian people, also a lot of Caucasian people. And it was interesting, after primary school, a lot of my Caucasian friends would go out and play on their bikes and do things. And I'd have to study, you know, until the sun <laughs> went down. Um, and often, you know, we'd eat very spicy foods, right? I know. But they'd eat very bland foods. And 
what was really interesting was, have you heard of the concept ring of fire? No. Do you know, do you know what that is? No. So if you speak to a Caucasian person, yeah. when they eat spicy food, like a you know spicy Sri Lankan or Indian or even any other cuisine, yeah. generally because their bodies aren't used to it, when they go to do a number two later yeah. on, right? <laughs> it feels like fire because it's spicy, I know. right? However, for us, we are accustomed our to liver it. Our used to that Yes, our, our stomach. So when I heard this concept, I was like, what does that mean, right? And so <laughs> <laughs> another funny thing growing up, we've got different, you know, cuisines and how even our bodies are built. Mm. Um, but I love it. I love Australia and I love the multiculturalism and just how so many cultures come together and thrive. So that was a bit about growing up. It yeah, was yeah. different, but, you know, it's, it's been an incredible experience growing up in this great country. I think you gave me the very interesting statistics about the Tamil in Mel- Melbourne, especially the Sinhalese in Melbourne. I yes. wasn't aware about this particular statistics. Yes. But it's as good to know. Uh, on a side note, uh, do you know the background of the word curry came from? Curry, it's actually a Tamil word. Yeah. I think it comes from the Tamil language. The, the slang curry came um, when, when the you know first set of immigrants, South Asian immigrants started to come to Australia, the kids, you know, used to take the lunchbox to the school. And, you know, when you are meeting with the mates, you, you usually ask that, hey, what do you got today? And 365 days or whatever days they attend the school, the only one word answer would be from the all the South Asian kids would be, I got a curry. <laughs> and that's how they started calling, you know, the South Asian yes. people curry. But it started off with a slang, but now it's, I think, catching up as a, you know, something cool and catchy term. Well, you know what's funny, actually, to add to that point. So, yes, you're right. It, it was a slang that's born out of Australia, I believe you're correct. Because when, I, when, when the group started and everything, in the US, in other countries, it was conned a racist term. Whereas here in Australia, <laughs> it's a funny term. You know, all South Asian people who are kind of, you know, kind of look like us yeah. were, were crowned curry. And that's when that global phenomenon kind of took off. But you're right. <laughs> it's something that's kind of homegrown. Yeah, believe, it is so. homegrown. Yeah. And I think I have, I have observed that thing that, you know, racism, uh, rest of the world versus Australia is quite different. Here, the racism has been taken as quite casually. It's, it, it's, it never meant for, you know, the racist purpose. Hmm. Even if even if you encounter certain racism uh, behavior from people, hmm. in in their subconscious, they may not feel that, ah, oh, this is racist. Yeah. This is, they're just putting it to the table very, very casual way. Hmm. So I think that, that's where, that's where the, the, you know, the gel of the word curry yes with the indian australian culture has has mixed up yes but that's a that's a good insight so uh, how was how was that upbringing look like uh, being a refugee child uh, being school uh, being high, middle school or in professional career uh, how it affected both positively negatively or even if it is neutral how was a, that experience? It's a good question. To be honest, and I know this might not be the story for all South Asians, I've been very blessed in the sense I've never had racism against me. Growing up, people have always been supportive. Mm-hmm. They've been curious to hear about my culture, yeah. about how, what value I can bring as well. Yeah. Um, and it's always been terrific having parties at home or gatherings at home where mm-hmm. I can invite friends who are Egyptian, who are Caucasian, who are of different natures, Asian, um, come and enjoy the cultures. And so it's actually been quite welcome. And people have been quite open to, I guess, the Sri Lankan culture, Mm -hmm. um, the different things that we do, cricket we play, the different sports. And so I've actually had quite a positive experience. Has your parents, you know, gave you some sort of heads up as to, you know, do's and don'ts? Because being a refugee child, Mm. you know, uh, at first place, your parents are even a bit more, you know, conscious all the time. At least beginning of you know first five ten years absolutely being a refugee suddenly coming into you know different country because immigrant makes you know a conscious decision over a period of one yes. or two years that okay uh, i want to move to xyz country as immigrant. Yes. whereas in your case your parents uh, came to australia as mm. a refugee so that was uh, if not overnight it was a sudden move for them yes so have you got those those uh, heads up from your parents uh, do's and don'ts or they, they try to protect you 
from from certain you know australian things which you know they don't want to bring it home or yeah. they don't want to uh, they 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 want to make feel you protected yeah so no, how absolutely. was that experience it's a good one and i think one of the big blessings is um as soon as they came to australia as soon as i was born our local church it's one of the largest in melbourne it's got 101 nationalities mm-hmm. and i think that really helped us understand the culture and they were ones who were supportive of different multicultural people mm-hmm. how to integrate into society and i think that's what taught them and us growing up how to be Aussie but also at the same time they were obviously very big on and i'm very grateful for you know making sure like we don't get into the party culture mm-hmm. or you know get to get and do other other things that are part of Aussie culture as well um but actually have good morals and good standards and i think drilling those things in maybe at the start may have been annoying but mm-hmm. looking back now they you know they were very helpful in that sense as well of yeah. of, of of bringing us up in a good way like that so i think heads up just being aware that it's you know very different in terms of how people dress in australia you know the drinking culture um all these different things which are very different to a lot of south asian culture and how to handle that were definitely some good conversations that were had yeah so you you if i'm not wrong your parents escaped the civil war yes. in sri lanka and landed up in australia yes so <clears throat> did that experience of you know experiencing the civil war and suddenly land into the completely different culture and the culture experience and culture shock for them uh did they play any role that 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 experience of your parents you know mm. being escaping from a such a horrible situation uh, you know it's it's hard to describe because civil war and you know coming as refugee is something nobody can describe mm. somebody can feel yes like it, it the war doesn't happen every day it happens once in a century where mm. people have to displace and uh, take a refugee status in some of the countries yeah did that particular experience of your parents you know so some of the horrible things which we mm. can't even discuss uh, in back in home sri lanka mm. did they uh, tell you those stories or uh, how was that experience did they share that experience with you uh, how was how was that thing yeah it's a very good question and i guess the the short answer is as you mentioned you know for generations hundreds and hundreds of years always in sri lanka and like that you know boom new country so big shift and those stories when i was young absolutely not but recently um over the last couple of years have been privileged to hear more of the stories there's a lot of books that have come out as well okay. um there's an incredible uh Can- canadian national bestseller his name's Roy Ratnavel he came to canada when he was 18 he actually uh escaped a torture prison so he was being tortured wow so what happened back then was and there's plenty of stories i could tell but i'll just share this one just for no reason right they'd pick boys kind of you know in that kind of under 20 age you know that kind of young potentially could join the army age mm-hmm. they got them put them in torture camps this guy was like in the torture camp for like 2 months and by some miracle he got let out someone came and rescued him and anyways long story short canada sponsored him and he got into canada and from nothing he became one of canada's top executives Wow. managing a financial firm with more than 400 billion dollars of assets worth of management right and so he's one of uh, a really good story of a tamil immigrant from sri lanka who changed the game made the most of his opportunities he's written a book mm-hmm. i had the privilege of interviewing him as well terrific bloke but hearing stories like this hearing stories of other atrocities that happened back to you know people who are our relatives our family fa- friends when i come here and i look at the opportunities i go like I have to make the most of every second I've got in this country. We are so blessed. We're in the top 0.1% here in Australia and probably in other western countries where viewers yeah. may be listening. And I just go, man, like my parents didn't have these opportunities. I do. I need to make the most and I need to instead of dividing and war and all these things, we need to do something different and bring people together. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it has definitely made a mark. every disasters makes you know good and bad memories so i think we need to carry off with the good memories i think yes. is, there, is there any have you have you met that block uh, uh, in person or did you have a chance to i have i actually interviewed him we did a, oh wow i hosted him yes when he was in melbourne all right and fascinating story mm-hmm. and now he's just taking on the world sharing his story fighting for the freedoms mm-hmm. and he's a typical example and there's so many if you look at immigrants 
particularly people from war war areas, they're some of the most entrepreneurial, hardworking, positive contributors to society. Yeah. You know, and it's not something that's talked about a lot. I think when you come out of that lifestyle, like even my parents and a lot of their friends and family, some of the most hardworking people and you know, building the backs of this country and even, you know, other immigrants as well who come from... Most immigrants, I think. You know, less fortunate countries. They come here and they see the opportunities and they go, wow. All of a sudden, I think, you know, one portion of the mind just open up yeah. and come up with the brilliant ideas and, and whatnot. And I think we have seen and witnessed a lot of the, lot of the great stories of immigrant making their footmarks on, mm. you know all completely different country different landscape different culture do you, uh, what is the one thing you you really like about that that individual uh, or, or you you it just just stuck in your mind that okay this is something i will follow for 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 you know rest of my life is there any specific uh, quality any specific advice you 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 think you is stuck in your mind i think the big thing and so again with this guy right like he escaped so when he went to canada right Two days after he landed in Canada, he got news that his father was shot for no reason, right? So in the northern town, wow. his his family home is opposite where my grandparents were, right? And my grand grandparent, my grandma heard the gunshots and was kind of with their family after. So your grand your grandma was in Sri Lanka at yeah. that time. Oh, okay. opposite house is this guy, this oh. this guy from Canada, right? And shot the the dad shot dead on the street so he sent his son to canada he came back home two days later dead and these are the kinds of stories happening right and when when this guy talks about his story and his rise to what he's done he's like freedom is not something we can take for granted like tomorrow is never guaranteed and the one thing that his uh, father said to him as well before he passed away was i didn't send you to canada to live or to survive i sent you there to thrive that's right and I think that's one big takeaway that stuck with me. We're not here in Australia to, I mean, let's be honest. It's, I don't want to say easy, but look, almost anyone can get a job, live a comfortable life in this society, in this country. I think it's more than that. We have to thrive and make a difference and create impact. And I think that's really what stuck with me and what I'm really passionate about. I think one thing I can, I can uh, feel that from the discussion is the value of freedom is can be appreciated much more at high high level uh, from a refugee or from immigrant absolutely who is coming from a country where freedom is just myth so absolutely I completely second to that idea that was that was a good experience and that was that was a great uh, discussion mm. um i think now let's move to the the bigger part um subtle curry trades yes which is you know the venture you have started off as a out of nowhere and now grown to 1.1 million that is amazing and the best part is uh 90% of them are gen z or gen y mm. which is you know going to be the future of of many countries subtle curry traits tell me something about that yeah. how it started um what inspired you Absolutely. So how it started was in 2018, as a bit of a joke, I just created this page because I was like, there's funny things that our culture, our parents do. And the page was honestly only meant for like kind of Sri Lankan Tamil people, kind of friends I knew, just have a laugh, right? That was <laughs> purely the reason, right? So I started this page, threw a few me memes in, and after about a day, right, it hit 2,000 members. And I was like, what is going on? And then a couple of days after, it hit 10,000 members. And I remember early on in those days, we were getting like thousands of posts just flooding through people wanting to get approved. So we had to turn on post approvals very quickly. But it actually at the start of the, the, you know, the journey, it was said it was harder to get a post approved on subtle curry traits than it was <laughs> to get into Harvard. I am, I am <laughs> one of the victim. There you I go. You might be that. one of the victims there as well. And yeah. so in those early initial days, we were like, what is going on, right? Because <laughs> this thing's exploding. Yeah. And I just, I just did it as a joke, right? Yeah. And I realized why people were coming, right? I realized one thing. It's not just Sri Lankans. It's Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, people from all over the world, right? People, America. America, 
you know, Canada, UK, all over the world with these backgrounds, right? And normally these people, sometimes, you know, we know we, you can't always put South Asians in a room, mm. you know, sometimes they're <laughs> disagreements and things. Yeah. However, they were all there united and they were laughing together. And one thing I realized was they were united around humor and humor was bringing them together. Yep. And that was when we established our mission, which is three simple words, heal with humor. Heal with humor. Heal with humor. So we want to use humor to heal the pain, the hurt, the different disagreements between South Asians. And very early on, we went, there's a lot of trashy meme pages out there, a, mm. lot of, a lot of stuff that people are doing. We want to be a wholesome one where you can share this content with your parents, have a laugh, something that ultimately is uplifting, yeah. a home away from home. And that's the stories we've got. People come onto the page, they have a look at the stuff and they go, man, I've moved from, you know, India three years ago. I don't feel like I'm at home, but when I go on the page, <laughs> you know, it feels like it's my family. And that's the vibe we created. And so from there, we actually hired a bunch of people from around the world um, to help moderate and, and, yeah. and uh, run the page. So, you know, we've hired from incredible places like obviously the US, Canada, the most, actually, do you want to have a guess where the most random country is that we've hired from? Have a guess. What's the most out there country you can think? Uh, is it South Asian or not South no, Asian? No, not South Asian. Mm. I'll give you one Iraq, guess. Iran. Okay, good guess. Uganda. You get, ah, okay. <laughs> we had a team member from Uganda. Can you believe that? I didn't even know there was Indian communities in Uganda. Oh, Indian community in Uganda, in Uganda. is big. Yeah. Big as hell. There's apparently like, uh, you know, years ago, there's a settlement oh, there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and the story goes in 18th century. Yeah. Even even before the, I think, yeah, right around the Britishers, the first Britishers troop came to uh, South Asia. Mm. Around that time only, uh, most of Gujaratis yeah. have made their way to Uganda for business purposes. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, long story short, the Indian community in Uganda is, is a big thing. Yeah. And and, and I think uh, sometime around late 80s, the if I'm not wrong, Idi Amin era came. And the Idi Amin was the dictator of Uganda or Africa. And he... Uh, overnight, you know, give a 60 day warning hmm. to all the Indian subcontinent people to leave the country. Really? And uh, the stories goes like, you know, people have to sell their business for nothing. Right. Like, you know, people are making millions back mm. in the days and they have only 60 days. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, the homes, the jewelries, a business, uh, Everything they have to sell it for nothing. Yeah. To the local community only. Wow. So yeah, the Indians in Uganda are, are, are a big, big, big community. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All Which right. again, like I never knew. Okay. But the fact is, like, all these different South Asian communities around the world happen to find their way onto subtle curry traits, and it was just incredible to source different team members from everywhere. Do from you, there. Do you, do you keep track of uh, the analytics of? People's Absolutely. origin. What is the number one country? Origins as in like which country they live in now or yeah, background? They, they, they live in now. So the biggest country is the United States. However, I'm going to ask you, where do you think our biggest city is? It's not a. It's not in the US. Somewhere in mm. South Asia, mm -hmm. where's our biggest city? Uh, I can guess based on the memes and the comments I saw. Is it Dhaka? Bangladesh? Yes. Ah, yes. Spot on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Dhaka. Did I, I didn't tell you that? No, That's because, because I have guess. seen a lot of the comments and a lot of the memes from uh, Bangladeshi yes. background people. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of, there's a Bangladeshi force even in our community. And so it's been incredible just the way it's grown. Um, we've had the opportunity to work with people like Hassan Minaj, other brands as well. I'll, I'll and, come to that. Yeah. yeah and, yeah, but you know, today, looking back almost five years, in October, we hit five years. It's been a blessing to be over a million members. And the biggest thing is it's a closed private group, right? Yeah. So not a public group. So it's actually one of the biggest private groups biggest in the private world. In the world, yeah. So, which is, again, it's an honor. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's great to just have so many South But Asians I want to put out one thing, guys. <laughs> uh, 
any curries sitting in subtle curry trades any member remember you have barged into south asian sorry sri lankan tamil territory because it was meant for that purpose <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't meant for you guys but you just barge in and now we are all living happily and sharing meme every day every second in fact and enjoying that 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 uh, that space online um so uh started in 2018 yes when did your parents came to know about this yeah it's a good question i reckon it was like 6 months in at least 6 month what was maybe 3 to 6 months size? i at reckon it was still under 100000 100000 under maybe yeah. like somewhere between 50 to 100 mm-hmm. and then they they found out i think that was when it was very viral um and we were starting to hire some moderators and they they found out and um yeah they had, they had no idea what it was what was their reaction like they just had no clue what was happening because <laughs> like do, like, do they do they look at the memes now now they like, do now they're across it uh they're on the page and uh very supportive they love yeah. it but i think at the time it was just a foreign concept you mm. know what is a facebook group what is a facebook community who who is more involved your your dad or your mom uh i'd say my mom probably <laughs> um okay i think my dad he still enjoys the memes as well but i think my mom is a bit more into it gives me some good feedback here and there mm-hmm. so it's a good litmus test to make sure even her generation like the memes yeah. but it's good once once she got involved or heard about it she shared it with her friends and it's good we've even got some of that community do you, do you, do you get a lot of the questions from your uh, either of the parents say mom or dad you know they sometimes struggle to understand certain gen z or gen y mm. lingo do they uh, do you receive those those questions like what, what does this mean oh my omg or or uh, <laughs> lol rfl yes uh what, what is the uh, first first one uh, the first lingo which which your parents asked to you probably like early on in those days probably lol was a big one like what why does everyone keep saying lol or lol <laughs> so explaining that one now that's i think it's in the dictionary now oh, don't yeah, quote yeah, me on yeah, that course, that's of course yeah just common common language now lol But, is the origin of of those abbreviations yeah well it used to be lol used to be uh lots of love i don't mm. know if you knew that no But i that was, was the original Like, oh, okay. like that's what old people if you say lol it means lots of love oh really in generations past and now the new generation so we have just uh, snatched that word from yes. them yes oh, okay. that's right so once you started the subtle curry trades uh, what was the challenging challenges you faced in the beginning or even even now like you know now with the 1.1 million and growing mm. you need you have you know uh, extra responsibility on your shoulder that a the authenticity of certain information has to be has to be there mm. because of the mass mm. with mass a lot of the misinformation the fake content or fake news mm. you know it 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 doesn't even take a minute to spread fake news yeah. in such a large community so how do you maintain that authenticity how do you make sure the community members are safe and served with the accurate and legit information Yeah, it's a terrific question. As I mentioned early on, we were getting thousands of posts a day, right? And so what we did was we turned post approvals on. So that was a very big help to make sure we could control and also approve the right posts, make sure the information was correct, we weren't breaching any things. So that was good. Also, we'll shout out Facebook has a lot of auto, I guess, approve and community things that blocks a lot of misinformation. different crude content other things as well that may be harmful to the page so that's terrific and also credit to our all our moderating team is watching they're really the backbone of what we do at subtle curry traits when a member uh you know they report something or something harmful is said or there's comment sections that go out of hand they're the ones who come in who either turn off comments delete comments who look after the page and ensure that there's a safe environment but to answer your question many challenges many struggles you know trolls are a real thing there yeah. are people who exist who just want to create trouble yeah and you have to be aware of that if you're in the online space have you have you made an uh, any put any automation to post approval uh, like to make sure that you know before it hits to a manual approval it gets some sort of curation before it reaches to you know any of your moderators yes. for approval yes correct so there's a lot of like if there's like external links that are shared or if there's any like explicit content or any like um violent content or things like that 
it automatically just gets off our page. I mean, it won't even come for approval. So that definitely helps us to maintain what comes through, um, which is terrific. And how do you manage the fake news, for example? If, 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 if you know, there's no, there's no external link, but somebody has shared, you know, within the meme, if, if somebody shared, you know, a news or information which is half true, Mm. or it's completely fake how do you w- what sort of moderation going on in that case yeah it's a good question the way we look at it is we're not a we're not a news page we're not a political page yeah. we're a meme page so if there's anything that's going to be deceiving or misleading then we'd err on the side of caution not even approve whatever we do post is humor in nature yeah. and stuff that makes people laugh so i think we draw that line very clearly and we play it on the safe side we don't want to spread misinformation or scare people into anything as well yeah. so our team is very well trained to make sure the right things are there things are light-hearted and if it's treading on even questionable then we just make sure we don't play in that space and it's a good point you've raised there's a there's been a lot of struggles through the years where different political things have come up yeah. different stuff have been stirred up in, in in society and there's been a lot of comments one way or another and i think we've learned from that we don't play in that space so uh you talk about political uh, side of it as a moderator as an admin do you get a lot of the personal dms and a approving content b why not approving content <laughs> or c why the content has been rejected so for example you know you know humor mm. comes with you know the right now the new culture has started called offend culture with mm. humor you know no matter what humor you put even if you put a humor to a color black mm. and white some people will find out uh, you know i take often to mm. let's say black is better at some corner of the world people will say what about white mm. why white is not better mm. i mean it's not even a uh, you know m- a matter of concern mm. but humor comes with a lot of you know often people gets people gets personal mm. people get offended of certain things certain uh, people with a certain set of ideology mm. be it political be it religious or be it uh, uh, to their gender people get offended mm. people may get offended yep. to certain things uh, do you get any personal messages threats sometimes that hey this is not good why are you approving such post um, be it you know uh i i i know you're not approving any post which is you know islamophobic or uh, uh any other you know community mm. like jewish and uh, those things mm. do you get those those messages in your personal yeah no it's a good question and the short answer is yes always people going why are you not you know the lighthearted why are you on approving my post etc but also why aren't you supporting this topic talking about this topic and like i said we are definitely not islamophobic or jewophobic or yeah, know, any of those things or even so i think with with those sorts of things we always look at the principle is this post going to unite people bring them together or is it going to divide so how do you how do you deal with threat for example i think we go, you got to take them seriously um, but you also have to go not everybody is going to like what you do when you operate on such scales there are always going to be haters there's always going to be people who say you're this or that or you know have an opinion about you and i think it's building thick skin and it comes back to the why you exist having a very strong purpose and so for us we know why we exist we know what we want to deliver to the audience in terms of our values and which is very important so i think our values if i just list them off for you are again we want to believe in humor uh dignity dignity to south asians we want to celebrate vitality right the the culture that we have but also belonging we want to foster a community of belonging and so we look if anything is against those values we don't approve and if people pressure us to post about things that are not relevant to our page you know like what are they going to do and i yeah. think it's really standing for your ground there's something very powerful but there's always going to be people who are messaging has, you has has any threat or any any similar messages reached beyond messaging no people no. have been pretty good okay. um we've been well protected okay and i think people realize it's just a mean page so it's been <laughs> it's been okay yeah yeah, um, yeah. so yeah but you i think uh, being a meme page i think the stand up comics across the world this is the place for you to grow if you're growing 
and for if you want to nurture yourself this subtle curry traits is the page for you to spread original content mm. and spread across how many countries do you have people from uh literally i'd say probably on more than 100 countries 100 countries guys so stand up comics take a note <laughs> all right um and now subtle curry since you started the big moment the best moment came on when hasan minaj mm. spend i think 20 20 plus minutes on the netflix looking uh, scrolling subtle curry memes what was that experience to you oh that was incredible it was on youtube actually so you did an ama on us and that was really when i think we realized this is something that was probably one of the defining moments of the group and the movement and so yeah it was terrific one day he re- they reached out the team hey we'd like to do an ama on your page So AMA means ask me anything. Ask me anything. And so he posted it was I think one of our most liked posts. Got like 30, 40, maybe 50,000 likes, I can't remember. And just so many comments again. Many, many comments, people having their questions. Yeah. And Sodo Curry Trade just went uh Hassan and I just went through the page. He was growing through it and it was just a surreal moment. Like I created this as a joke. <laughs> and here is this one of you know the biggest south asian celebrities in the western world right scrolling through this accidental page i created on the other side of the world and talking about it yeah. i mean it was quite i couldn't believe it so have you got a chance to speak to hasan not directly no not directly not directly so the the management has reached out to yes, you guys yes so the management was kind of in between us mm-hmm. he obviously made the video yeah um but yeah what an experience Do you Very want to surreal. do do you think you want to speak to us on Minaj? Yeah, absolutely. I think all South Asian people of influence, I think it's there's something to learn, but Hassan as well, like the stuff that he's done, the influence he has and the things he's doing for the South Asian One community. One of the biggest storyteller. Terrific storytelling. Someone who yeah, I look up to heaps and um I think lots to learn from him, yeah. <laughs> Hassan, if you're listening, uh there is a subtle curry admin a founder wants to have a word with you, so If you have some breathing time do connect with uh, Noel. Yes. Um so you know subtle curry comes with a lot of the responsibility. Mm. Um how do you manage you know managing the the page and your personal professional life? How do you find you know make balance between the um approving thousands of posts every minute? I I know you have a moderator and other things but how do you balance out you know your your personal life professional life versus the the subtle curry uh, duties or uh, stuff which you need to do every day it's a good question and really bill gates elon musk you and i we all have the same 24 hours in a day yep and so i think you look back you look back at the start of the interview the origins i think for me one big thing is how do we make the most of our time make the most of our day and the opportunities we have at hand so for me time management i love and subtle plug for anyone who's watching i have made videos on time management it's funny story i just made them as a hobby yeah uh people kept asking me how do you do all these things at the same time so to be efficient with my time i said i'm just going to make these videos explain it once and for all and people can go watch it there is it on youtube it's on youtube what's so the what's the title it's called productivity for purpose that's the channel name um i'll stop you there guys productivity of purpose that's the that's the channel name or that's the video name that's the channel name and that's there's the multiple videos name. do check out um if if a 1.4 1.1 million community manager can save the time for the personal chores i'm sure the video must be productive for you guys <laughs> as well <laughs> absolutely so short yeah. sharp to the point but i'll give you a bit, a bit of a high level how i do it is i plan to plan okay this is a concept that will change your life If you make time to plan your day, your week, you're going to be more efficient. If you understand how much work is going to come up, what different things are going to be, you can actually work through a lot, right? And so that's big for me. I prioritize sleep. I'm not someone who says sleep for 3 hours. Get your 8 hours of sleep. Yeah. Eat your 3 meals, exercise. And I'm a big believer in the Sabbath, which is just have a day off once a week where you do nothing, but for 6 days do your work. And you do that believe me you you have so much time to do many things so that's how i still at the moment time of the recording work have a full time job run the page run manage our team and also run my own business and 
I think, yeah, time is a gift. It's just how do we steward it? I think we have extra bond now with the sleep thing you say. Yes. <laughs> I love sleeping as well. Yes. So absolutely. we have extra bond now. <laughs> That's right. That's right, bro. Uh, all right. Any any specific meme or any meme which stuck to your mind of subtle curry? I'm sure there are millions of <laughs> memes on subtle curry and every meme within the few seconds of its post gets thousands of comments. And mm. I have seen one of the memes have got, you know, 49,000 comments in just few minutes. I mean, people are so creative. Mm. People actually create memes specific to subtle curry trades. Yes. I have seen them. I have not seen meme anywhere else, but it is there on subtle curry. Mm. Uh, any, any, any such memes, which is not only carries the humor value, but mm. it also carries some sort of message into that. Any meme, it stuck to your mind or you will, uh, yeah. you, you think that, you know, this is something, you know, this is something out of the, out of the box. Let me tell you about the subtle curry pose. Have you heard about this? No. The subtle curry pose a few years ago was a meme and it was a meme of these blokes in South Asia, probably like India somewhere where they were like sitting on top of each other. Mm -hmm. So just picture like one guy here, one guy here, one guy here, one guy here, like that, yeah. four people sitting on top of each other. And it was a meme. But then what happened was someone in like the US or Australia, they did the same thing with their friends. Yeah. And then from that, that started a viral movement and you can look at it, hashtag subtle curry pose. Yeah. And then people around the world were sitting on top of each other in this <laughs> four formation yeah. and taking pictures and posting it. So I think that was my favorite because it was a meme because at the start it was like funny, like no one's going to do this thing, right? Only some, maybe some silly people in the middle of nowhere in South Asia, right? <laughs> but it actually, from that, which was funny, it actually caused a movement of people who caught up, you know, with met up with their friends and did this thing and posted it and it turned into something more and, and built, it, it brought the community to life. Yeah, and so that was my favorite. I would say um, I was I was I was browsing through the subtle curry uh, page, and one of the thing I have observed in the comments, I, I usually go to the comments <laughs> of every yes. meme. A lot of the things, uh, most of the things I've observed that you know a complaint against the moderators is moderators are promoting certain TikTokers or, or certain uh, Instagram influencers to uh, to you know make them popular mm. how true it is or what do you what do you have to say about this complaint of many thousands of people they're saying that you know uh, i have seen uh, i think a couple of months back uh, there were some tiktokers who were constantly getting their post approved and uh, initially i felt that oh this this nice it's a it's a quite funny post but when i go into the comments people were complaining that you know why every time this 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 <laughs> tiktoker has you know his post approved in few seconds like every day one of the post is there from this particular tiktoker or um, instagram influencer uh, yeah. promoting their reels what do you have to say on that it's a good question i think people generally they want their posts approved <laughs> so they're just a bit salty that their posts don't get approved our team do always look for the best memes that yeah. come through that being said though we are big on south asian talent so there are a number of South Asian creators mm -hmm. that we have as content creator partners. All right. So actually to people who are watching, if you're an upcoming TikToker or Instagrammer, like we want to make sure if that's a- Let's make it official now. Career choice. So yeah. I think that is official. Maybe people missed it in the comments. All right. People so guys, this is official. <laughs> if you are upcoming uh, content creators, you have a large stage to play around. That's right. And we look for, not it, we can't accommodate for everybody. But there's a process and if you go through the process, you know, we're happy to explore and experiment with your content as well. Because at the end of the day, this community, it gives people a platform, an opportunity to grow and get their stories, their humor out into the world. So yeah, that's something that we do want to do more of. Yeah. So that's a good question that you asked and hopefully something we can solve for the members who Maybe miss an announcement and just like to go straight to the comments. <laughs> no, I think now it's uh, <laughs> since it's official, I would just repeat. Uh, Subtle Curry can give you a platform if you are if you have a spark in your content. Uh, originality, yes, originality is is the most important. And uh, without any uh, without any original content, I think there's 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 no there's no such thing as content creator. But if your content is original 
and uh, the content has spark definitely subtle curry can be a place for you to grow that was that was a uh, amazing information and i think a lot of the subtle curry members are looking forward to it now absolutely yeah uh, good good now from subtle curry and the founder of such a large community you have ventured into your own entrepreneurial journey that's right you have started your own company uh, which is helping strategizing growth of you know small to medium scale organizations take us through a little bit about it uh, let let us know what what is what exactly it does uh, how the idea started and uh, what what exactly you guys are doing in that absolutely so from subtle curry traits i realized one key thing and that was we were growing people on this online space we were uniting them and bringing value to other south asians other brands as well and from that a lot of brands reached out to me and said hey no can you do the same thing for my brand can you wow. help grow it and can you help bring that same authenticity virality to what we do yeah, and yeah, so that's yeah. what sparked growing oc which is growing online communities and i think the future is all about how we interact online mm-hmm. now for humans we always want community it's an age old thing yeah. right we need people to survive to thrive and post covid especially people are not out as much there's a lot of social anxiety how are people on their phones a lot yeah. and on the internet a lot and a place where people hang is online Yeah. online communities are exploding this is the place where we need to reach the next generation this is where brands need to reach their customers and need to play to have a presence and so what 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 my mission is with with growing i see is create real communities online simple as that and so what we do is we help businesses identify who their customers are bring them into a space in the online world where they can talk to them and nurture them understand their needs and help provide them the value that they deserve. And so an example of a client that I've helped recently is Zorali. So they're like Katmandu. What is the name? Zorali. Zorali. They're okay. like uh Katmandu or Macpack, an outdoors company. Yeah. And what we did was we grew their group from 0 to 9000 in 90 days. Wow. And what we did was for them their mission is to bring people outdoors, right? They're an outdoors company. And so from that we created this group where their customers were posting pictures of themselves outside, you know, in the mountains, camping, all these things, so doing all the things that their mission aligns to. And in these pictures they're wearing the Zorali gear, the the Zorali jumpers and bottles, etc. So from that Zorali now has free user generated content, saving them money on marketing. Mm-hmm. But more than that, they've got now a community where their customers are talking to each other. that place where they can ask uh questions to their customers what sort of products do you want that we can create more of and sell to you um and you know get polls and different feedback and get ideas mm-hmm. and i think it's beautiful when you create a community of customers when they interact with each other and they are there because of your brand it's so powerful it creates a lifelong customer and so my passion is to really do that for for all businesses so to really un- un- unlock that potential so the customers are all how did uh, how did the experience you you accumulated managing the subtle curry city how did that help uh, managing this particular use case with the commercial level with the brand because you know subtle curry is something you started out of hobby it it reached to a certain stage where you have professional moderators but did that experience help you uh, getting your commercial projects done in a in a meaningful way and reach, reach, reaching the output achieving the output you wanted absolutely 100% it did the systems we built to look after the page uh subtle curry traits like the number of posts that we put out or how we approve different posts moderate content and the different systems that we put into place mm-hmm. all those learnings bringing them back into growing oc has helped to grow and work with the different brands the different people as well um and so i'd say an absolute yes and from there as well it's actually been able to put a different creative lens because obviously we're a meme page mm-hmm. we do it this for fun but where there's actually a product and a business who has something and uh, a community around that as well it's helped us to grow and expand in that in that way as well and so we we've worked with some cool businesses and it's very exciting to see what people are doing online 
And really, if you don't have an online presence in 2023, I know a lot of people don't know who you are. You don't are. exist. <laughs> you don't exist. So it's so crucial for businesses to make sure they stay with the game and yeah. don't get left behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fair enough. And I think you you mentioned a very quick cool thing that you know, if you have a business and if you're not online, you you don't exist. I think 99.99 percent this this applies to all the business. Absolutely. And I think with with COVID that percentage has reached 200 percent. Yes. So I think every brand on earth must have a solid social presence. Yes. And a meaningful social presence. Absolutely. That's, that's an absolutely necessary and mandatory thing for anything. So uh, being an uh, entrepreneur, you are also actuary. Yes. You have studied actual science. Um, so take us through your professional journey. Where do you do you only do your business and the subtle career or you work somewhere as a as a professional actuary? Yeah, it's a good question. So I did my undergrad in actuarial studies along with finance as well. And so I work at Australia, one of Australia's big banks, which has been terrific, been there for about six years. Uh, and it's been an interesting journey just seeing how a bank operates, the finances, and again, the just just a sheer volume of what happens in the financial markets in this incredible country, Australia. Yeah. So do that alongside the subtle curry traits and the growing OC as well. And I think a lot of those skills that you learn in the product world, so I'm in the product space. Mm -hmm. So I work with a lot of tech, um, you know, I'm sure you've heard of agile methodologies. Yeah. So we're in the agile world. I'm on the product side, but working with a lot of, you know, your software developers, UX, UI designers, legal teams, you have to get legal sign off on a lot of things, yeah, yeah, yeah. get funding from the board. It really gives you a holistic approach into how to run a product in a bank. But that also helps in your entrepreneurial journey, because when you're an entrepreneur, you have to pull on different teams, different resources. You know, when you're driving a vision of, you know, an online community, uh, you need to pull on people to help you design it, to help design your posts. And I think a lot of those skills are interchangeable in how you do stakeholder management as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So I think uh, beyond you managing the subtle curry, you are working at the financial institution and you're running your own business. On top of it, I've just learned that you are a corporate speaker. Yes. What what led you to pursue that path? Um, what what inspire you, or how do you seem to aligning with your values and passions? Being corporate speaker, how how that idea came to your mind, and you, you want to pursue that? W was it uh, something you got the professional public speaking training, or this is came as a raw idea into your mind and just grow organically? It's a terrific question, and. For me, I've always loved public speaking. I've always loved just talking to people. Um, I did a personality test once and I found out I was 96% extroverted, so I love talking. 96% extroverted. 96% love talking, love engaging an audience. Um, what was that test, if you can tell us? Uh, the Maya Briggs test, Maya Briggs Maya personality Briggs test, test okay. so I would highly recommend. So did that, but anyways, in year three, so when I was like, I don't know, 10 years old, maybe younger, I remember I did a public speaking event in primary school and I won that event. I think that okay. really led to something in my, just I knew that I loved captivating an audience. And yeah. often growing up, I'd hear a stat, people are more afraid of public speaking than dying. And yeah. that never applied to me. <laughs> I was like, I love talking to people to inspire people. And also growing up as well. So our church, it's one of the largest in Melbourne, thousands of people. And I've had opportunities to host and speak so growing up, that experience helped me, I guess, speak to people and not be afraid of crowds. And more, more recently in my professional work, I run a lot of corporate events, a lot of big meetings. Um, and as of recently, like been speaking at universities, some of Australia's biggest universities. You heard, uh, yesterday you had a session at UTS? Yes, at, so I was at the University of Queensland yesterday. Tomorrow okay. I'll be at the University of Sydney. But what's really spurred me in this most recent phase is through subtle curry traits, through building the business and all the different things, there's such key learnings that have come out of that. And one of the biggest ones, right, as we look back on my story, is this simple one, which is kind of my mission at the moment, and that is unity equals virality. Mm -hmm. So I'll say it again, unity equals virality. And what I've, what I've learned is, like with the subtle curry traits, the reason we've grown to what we are and why we're so successful is because we unite with the humour. The reason why Australia as a country is so successful, 
compared to other countries in the world is because we are united and we accept each other, doesn't matter who we are, more or less, right? And I think this principle of unity equals virality is something our world so desperately needs when we're trying to divide each other by our political views or race or this or that. It's, uh, it's a big thing that I want to inspire people with and it's been a privilege to talk to these different audiences about how we can bring people together and why community is so important. So humor unites us, basically. Humor unites us. You That's know, amazing. It's, it's such a powerful thing. Wow. wow. So uh, can you elaborate on united, unity, uh, what, what's, the, what's the word, unity? Unity, yes. Unity equals, equals virality. virality. Do you have an example? Absolutely. Let me give you an example of Australia. Mm. Okay. So Australia as a country, right, compared to a lot of other countries, it's united. Um, we were in a place where there's freedom of speech, where it doesn't matter what color skin you are, you have an opportunity to go to school, to do different things. And when you're united, you can see this financial year, right? 400,000 immigrants are coming into this country. I know. That's yeah. a record. Never before. We're a destination country for immigrants. That shows we're a viral country. House prices <laughs> going through the roof. That shows we're viral. But more than that, if you compare Australia over the last 20 years, our living standards have gone up. You know, our health care, our infrastructure, it's getting better and better. We are a viral country, right? Compared to a lot of other countries in the world. And why are we viral? Yes, you know, the, the media says a lot of things, but really because we're united. Yep. We're united together. So that's one example. And there's many other things. When we apply this principle, you can see that bringing people together helps us truly succeed and thrive in life and be viral. So thanks a lot, Noel. Uh, one last part. Uh, the, I think a lot of the question, a lot of the people asking the same question to me and to, to you as well. How to get the post approved on subtle credit trade faster? That's a very good question. And here are some tips for all of those who are watching. Number one, make it original all right don't copy anybody else make it your own uh number two make it funny like show other people and if they laugh that's a really good thing and number three don't give up uh, a lot of people they post and post and there's i heard a story of someone who posted i think 30 times before they got their post finally approved and it's not anything personal we literally have thousands coming in every day so i encourage you build that curry resilience don't give up and um, we look forward to seeing your post approved as well. Thank you so much, Noel. That was a very, really good insight. And thanks for, uh, you know, walking us through your journey, your professional journey, and all the very best. Looking forward to see you succeeding on your professional life, personal life, and your entrepreneurial journey. Thanks a lot for bantering with us at Curious Banter. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for watching as well today.